Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Reema Gupta from University of Delhi. So today we are going to discuss about the module that is Nano Oxide Structural Ceramics and it is from the paper Ceramics. So after completing this module, you all shall be able to understand the silicon carbide, silicon nitride, Cialons and Max Ceramics. So students, before moving to ceramics like silicon carbide, nitrides and Cialons, let us discuss about them briefly first. So silicon carbide, silicon nitride and Cialons have been under development and production and use for a long time. The uses include balls, rollers, raceway blanks, mechanical seals and walls, wear plates, sandblast nozzles and even acid pump seals. Some of the other applications where they have been used are extrusion dies, guides and pulleys. Then they have been used in liners, grinding media and components for the pulp and paper making industry. They are also being used in nozzles and reticulate ceramics for molten metal filters, oil field components, tool bits, liquid metal filters, pre-combustion chambers and so on. So such ceramics have very high properties including high strength, high modulus, high temperature capability and chemical inertness. But because of low fracture toughness, no large scale use in demanding structural applications are there. So lately, some new types of nano-oxide structural ceramics have been developed and in this module, we will be discussing about these non-oxide structural ceramics which are silicon carbide, silicon nitride, Cialons and newly developed MAC ceramics. Silicon carbide Silicon carbide for applications in refractories we have already discussed in previous modules. So as mentioned there, the two major polymorphs of silicon carbide are alpha silicon carbide which has a hexagonal structure like woodzite and beta silicon carbide which has a zinc blend structure like diamond. Of the two, the alpha phase is marginally more stable than beta polymorph. Because of its low thermal coefficient of expansion and high thermal conductivity, it has a very high thermal shock resistance. It retains high strength at high temperatures and has high fracture toughness. It is inert to attack from most chemicals and slags. It oxidizes slowly in an oxidizing atmosphere but can still be used in air up to quite high temperatures that is up to 17-20 degrees Celsius under certain conditions and almost up to its dissociation temperature that is 2400 to 2700 degrees Celsius in the inert atmospheres. So students, you can see the representative properties of silicon carbide and you can see that the density of silicon carbide is 3.2 gram per centimeter cube. The Young's modulus is 370 gigapascal. The fracture toughness is 3.5 mega newton meter to power minus 3 by 2 whereas the fracture strength is 390 megapascal. Silicon carbide preparation. So for application in structural engineering products, silicon carbide bodies are fabricated through two routes. So the first is reaction bonding and the second one is sintering of ultra fine powder with some dopants. In reaction bonding or reaction sintering, 
a mixture of silicon carbide and carbon are compacted and infiltrated with liquid silicon. Firing is carried out at 1400 degrees Celsius. Silicon and carbon react to form beta silicon carbide which bonds the pre-existing silicon carbide grains. It is difficult to react the silicon totally. About 8 to 10 percent silicon remains unreacted because of which the product cannot be used above 1350 degrees Celsius. In the centering of ultrafine powder of silicon carbide, the additives like carbon and boron or carbon and aluminium are used. Dopants like iron, lithium and magnesium are also used. The dopants are so selected that they do not decompose silicon carbide during sintering. The carbon plays an important role during the sintering of silicon carbide. It increases the concentration of point defects which increases the diffusion. It also removes the oxide film at the grain boundary which retards the transport of vacancies across the grain boundary. The compact is centered in an inert atmosphere between 2000 to 2100 degrees Celsius and a complex set of reaction takes place during sintering. Now here comes silicon nitride and its preparation. The basic building block of the structure of silicon nitride is SIN4 tetrahedron. The tetrahedra are linked at the corners. The silicon nitride bond are short and they are very strong. The silicon nitride powder is prepared by the following process which we will discuss one by one. So the first is direct nitridation of silicon. This is the method most used in commercial practice and the following reaction occurs like 3Si plus 2N2 gives Si3N4. Here delta H is minus 175 kilocalories per mole at 1600 Kelvin so it is exothermic. The melting point of silicon is 1414 degrees Celsius and the silicon is very volatile at temperatures near the melting point. Also, it tends to oxidize readily and on the other hand, complete nitridation is not possible unless the silicon is melted. The nitridation is therefore carried out in pure nitrogen atmosphere. So to reduce the silicon volatilization, the reaction is carried out in two stages. That is for 25 to 50 hours at 1325 to 1350 degrees Celsius followed by 10 to 25 hours at 1425 to 1450 degrees Celsius. The product consists of alpha and beta silicon nitride phases in the ratio of 3 to 1 if the temperature is kept below 1410 degrees Celsius. Whereas the beta phase increases if the temperatures are used. The other three processes and the corresponding reactions are as follows. So the next one is carbothermal reduction of silica followed by nitridation. In this case the reaction is 3SiO2 plus 6C plus 2N2 gives Si3N4 plus 6CO. So here Delta H is 303 kilocalories per mole which is endothermic. The next is silicon amide decomposition. So in this the reaction is SiCl4 plus 6NH2 gives SiNH whole twice plus 4 times NH4Cl at room temperature 
and then 3 Si NH hole twice gives Si 3 NH4 plus 2 NH3 at 1200 to 1500 degree Celsius. The next phase is gas phase synthesis in this 3 SiCl4 plus 16 NH3 gives Si3N4 plus 12 NH4Cl. To prepare sintered silicon nitride bodies, several methods are used depending on the applications. So, let us discuss these methods one by one. So, the first is reaction bonding or reaction sintering. In this process, the silicon powder is compacted into a desired shape. It is heated to 1200 degrees Celsius in an atmosphere of nitrogen or mixture of nitrogen and hydrogen or it can be nitrogen and argon. So, the nitrogen reacts with silicon to form silicon nitride. So, initially, alpha silicon nitride fibers grow into the pores of the compact. Then the temperature is gradually raised to 1400 degrees Celsius and now mostly beta silicon nitride that is beta Si3N4 forms. So, the density of about 85% is achieved and the final microstructures consist of grains of alpha and beta phases. So, the hot press silicon nitride is the next procedure that is HPSN. So, in this technique, the silicon nitride powder is mixed with some additives and hot pressed at 1700 to 2000 degrees Celsius. So, the hot pressing produces simple shapes. Very high densities and strengths can be achieved using this technique, but for complicated shapes, the hot isostatic pressing is usually used. Now, the next is liquid phase sintered silicon nitride, that is LPSSN. So, the large amount of suitable additives and the silicon nitride powder is used to carry out the liquid phase sintering. So, an inexpensive process is liquid phase sintered silicon nitride, which yields adequate properties suitable for many applications. So, a large number of sintering aids are used to center the silicon nitride and some of these are yttrium oxide that is Y2O3 or magnesium oxide that is MgO. Now the next is gas pressure sintered silicon nitride that is GPSSN. So, in this process, the silicon nitride powder with sintering aids is sintered at a high pressure, but a high nitrogen pressure is used. So, in this technique, a gas is used. That's why the name is gas pressure assisted sintering technique. So, the representative properties of silicon nitrides are tabulated in this table where the density of silicon nitride is 3.2 gram per centimeter cube, Young's modulus is 300 gigapascal, fracture toughness is 7 mn m minus 3 by 2, fracture strength is 900 to 1200 megapascal, Weibull modulus is 15 meters. Cielons. Cielons are the solid solutions of silicon nitride that is Si3N4 in which part of silicon is replaced by aluminium and simultaneously part of nitrogen is replaced by oxygen to maintain the charge neutrality that is in silicon nitride SiA is Si plus aluminium and nitrogen is nitrogen plus oxygen. So, they can be looked upon as a part of the quaternary system that is SiO2, Si3N4, Aln, Al2O3. So, there are three types of Cialons with isostructural with 
alpha SI3 and 4, beta SI3 and 4 and silicon oxynitride. So, the most common are beta ions, which have the general formula Si 6 minus Z, Alz, Oz and 8 minus Z. So, beta ions are the most commonly used and they have the general formula which we have discussed in the previous slide is Si 6 minus Z, Alz, Oz and 8 minus Z. So, the sintering aids such as the yttrium oxide that is Y2O3 or magnesium oxide that is MgO or a rare earth oxides are used to densify. More liquid is formed at lower temperatures than in the case of silicon nitrite and the densification is better. On sintering above 1700 degrees Celsius, the elongated hexagonal beta ions grain grow in an oxynitride liquid phase made up of additives such as yttria, alumina, silica and aluminium nitride. The liquid phase forms a high temperature glass on cooling. So the beta ions have excellent toughness but their hardness which is 14 to 16 gigapascal is low. The alpha ions have higher hardness of 22 gigapascal and this comes from their longer stacking sequence that is ABCD as compared to AB for the beta variety. So such a structure provides a high resistance to dislocation motion. Alpha ions the alpha ceylon materials produced earlier had a microstructure of fine equi-aged grains. Consequently, the material had a low toughness. Over the years, progress has been made to produce a microstructure with interlocking and elongated grains. This has resulted in alpha ceylon's material of high fracture toughness. In alpha ceylon, it is essentially a solid solution of alpha SI3 and 4 in which there is a standard substitution of the silicon nitride bond with the aluminium oxide bond. In addition, there is substitution of silicon by aluminium and simultaneously filling of the interstitial sites by a cation M. It has a general formula that is M, M by Z, SI 12 minus M plus N, AL, M plus N, O, N, N, 16 minus N, where M is the interstitial cation with a valence of Z. The alpha phase is stable only in a limited composition range. A full phase diagram for alpha ceylon has to be quaternary phase diagram involving three cations that is silicon, aluminium and M and two anions that is nitrogen and oxygen. However, a binary phase diagram may be used to illustrate the range of stability with the concentration of M. Such binary diagram is between silicon nitride that is Si3 and 4 for which M is 0, N is 0 and M2 by Z O is to 3 aluminium nitride where M is equal to 2 N which is shown in the figure in the next slide. So students, you can see a figure on the top left corner of the slide showing the pseudo binary phase diagram between beta silicon nitride that is beta Si3 and 4 and M2 by ZO is to 3 aluminium nitride showing the region of stability of the alpha ceylon phase. So, in the figure, you can see that the horizontal composition line in this diagram correspond to M is equal to 2N. In this phase diagram, the alpha ceylon exists as a 
eutectoid phase and its lower solubility limit is nearly temperature independent as shown by nearly a vertical line while the upper solubility limit increases with temperature the range of solubility decreases with increase in the size of the interstitial cation the size of the interstitial cation also has an effect on the eutectoid temperature where it decreases as the size of the interstitial cations decreases it becomes so low for small cations that the kinetics of the decomposition of the alpha phase become very slow and the alpha ceylon phase is stable down to room temperature this material is suitable for the practical applications the region of stability of the alpha ceylon expands with decreasing size of interstitial cation m thus when the interstitial cation m is equal to nd the stability region of alpha ceylon is very small in this case the alpha ceylon decomposes when held in a particular temperature range so the particular temperature range will be 1400 to 1500 degree celsius the stability region is quite large for yttrium and yb and so these alpha ceylons are stable in the useful temperature range initially the alpha ceylon ceramics were fabricated using powders having more than 90% of alpha silicon nitride that is si3 and 4 and these particles provided the nucleation sites for alpha ceylon grains this produced an equiaque structure of alpha ceylon and this material had a high strength but low fracture toughness so the key to produce alpha ceylon ceramics with elongated grains that is to improve the fracture toughness is to have very few nuclei for the formation of alpha ceylons in the starting powder and during the heating and forming steps this procedure is taken care so it has been found that alpha ceylon can be produced by starting from beta silicon beta silicon nitride that is beta si3 and 4 and rare earths in the starting powders thus in most compositions for which the stability of alpha ceylon phase is low the proportion for the formation of elongated grains is more that is in the compositions containing nd so this is because as the phase stability is low so the driving force for the nucleation is high and so very few nuclei forms so in the case of composition denoted by yb 1 2 1 2 that is m is 1.2 and n is 1.2 which has a very high driving force and a low nucleation rate a two step process are used for the formation of glass ceramic so the first is firstly the piece is held at lower temperatures around 1550 degrees celsius where the nucleation rate is very low so that only a few nuclei are formed then the piece is heated to 1950 degrees celsius to form elongated grains from these nuclei students you can see on the left hand side a figure showing the amount of seeds versus fracture toughness for alpha ceylon so even though it is possible to prepare alpha ceylon from suitable composition using controlled heat treatment the dependence of composition temperature and phase stability on the nucleation rate makes the process difficult to control
An easier alternative is to use seeds of alpha ceylons in the starting powders. Thus, the alpha ceylon is first prepared separately and then small amounts of the seeds of this are used along with the starting powder. When the amount of seeds is small, the elongated grains of alpha ceylon are obtained. The amount of the elongated grains and thus the fractured toughness of the material depends on the amount of seed and can be controlled. So students, you can see a plot of the amount seed versus the fractured toughness and a maximum fracture toughness of about 11 mega newton per meter to power 3 by 2 can be achieved in Y containing alpha ceylon by optimizing the amount of seeds. However, the fracture toughness of the ceylons is still far below for metals and is inadequate for many structural applications. This is also the case for the other ceramics discussed earlier that is Al2O3, zirconium oxide, silicon carbide and silicon nitrite. Here comes Max Ceramics. In 1960s, Hans Nautney et al. discovered that more than 100 new carbides and nitrites including titanium silicon carbide and titanium gerbanium carbide, no further interest was shown in these material until 1990s. When the Bassam and El Braghi prepared large samples of titanium silicon carbide and showed that it had unique properties which combined the properties of metals and ceramic. Thus, it had a high electrical and thermal conductivity like metals and was oxidation resistance and thermal shock resistance like ceramics. Later, they discovered that the titanium aluminium nitrite, that is Ti4AlN3, and it became clear that these materials belong to a family which can be represented by the formula Mn plus 1 Axn or max phases, where n is equal to 1, 2, or 3, and m is the transition element. A is a group element and X is carbide or nitrite. The phases corresponding to N is equal to 1, 2 and 3 are represented by 211, 312 and 413. The transition element that is M can be from group 3, group 4 or group 6. No max phases are known with the transition elements Y or NU from group 3 or W from group 6. The max ceramics have a layered structure. They have a hexagonal unit cell and there are two formula units per unit cell. The unit cell consists of M6X octahedra with layers of a element between them. In 211 phase, two M6X layers separated by each other by A layer. Similarly, in 312 and 413 phases, the number of M layers separating the A layer is 3 and 4 respectively. In addition to the pure max phases, the solid solutions between them also exist. The number of these solid solutions is quite large and the bonds in the max phases are the combination of metallic, covalent and ionic bond. The MX is strongly covalent like that in the MX binaries whereas the MDMD bonding is metallic. Also, the MA bonds are relatively weaker than the MX bonds. The solid solutions between max phases also exist. The number of these solid solutions is quite large. The max phases have excellent electrical conductivity 
with resistivity in the range 0.2 to 0.7 micro ohm meter at room temperature so many of the max faces are so called compensated conductors in which both electron and holes are the charge carriers they are also good thermal conductors and their thermal coefficient of expansion are relatively low in the range of 5 to 10 micro per kelvin several of them have very low thermoelectric or c back coefficients the max phases oxidize in air but some of them form an oxide which forms a protective oxide layer making them resistant to oxidation for example t2alc which forms a protective layer of al2o3 layer on oxidation this layer also has a good spelling resistance making this material quite resistant to oxidation the max ceramics have near isotropic elastic properties they have high room temperature moduli that is young's and shear moduli r178 to 362 and 80 to 142 gigapascal respectively they also have a very low density of the order of 4 to 5 g per cm3 unlike the corresponding binary compounds the max phases can be very damage tolerant and therefore while titanium carbide is brittle damage tolerant and non machinable whereas titanium silicon carbide is machinable and damage tolerant the reason for this is the presence of a high density of mobile dislocation in the max phases the dislocation are bessel plane dislocations and however since the slip is confined only to the bessel plane and the number of slip system is less than 5 the number needed for good ductibility the result is that the max ceramics are ductile under constrained deformation or at high temperature but at brittle at room temperature therefore the deformations occur by shear band formation or king formation and by delaminations the max ceramics are relatively soft materials their room temperature fracture roughness ranges from 5 to 20 mega newton m to power minus 3 by 2 they show an r curve behavior the relatively high value of fracture toughness and the r curve behavior is due to the formation of plastically deformable bridging ligaments and the king boundaries which arrest the cracks the max ceramics undergo a brittle to plastic transitions that is bpt at a temperature above which they are quite ductile even in tension the bpt temperature of any of the max ceramic is found to lie between 1000 to 1100 degrees celsius they have exceptional resistance to thermal shock and they do not shatter or quenching from high temperatures easily they are machinable by conventional high speed tools and the powders of titanium silicon carbide and titanium aluminum carbide are available commercially for about 500 dollars per kg which make them quite expensive they can be sintered in pressureless manner to high density and despite of its high cost the ability to do pressureless sintering and to be able to machine to close tolerance may make these materials find more and more applications as the cost of powders drop as the demand increases so students let us summarize what we have learned in this module so so far we have learned that the room temperature fracture roughness is around 5 to 20 mega newton m to power minus 3 by 2 which can be seen from our curve behavior it undergoes a brittle to plastic transition that is bpt at bpt temperature 
and it is quite ductile in tension above BPT temperature and can be formed by various method as much as 25. So BPT temperature usually varies in the range of 1000 to 1100 degrees Celsius. They have an exceptional resistance to thermal shock and do not shatter on quenching from high temperatures. Moreover, they are easily machinable by conventional high-speed tools and primarily because of their laminated structures. So, powders of titanium silicon carbide that is TI3SIC and TI2ALC are available commercially for about dollar of 500 per kg which makes them quite expensive but they can be centered in a pressureless manner to high density. Despite the high cost of powders, the ability to do the pressureless centering and to be able to machine to close the tolerance may make these materials find more and more applications as the cost of powders drop as the demand increases. Thank you.